Yo, what is up, you guys? This is Dallas the Manipulator, yet a fucking gin, aka the original name Rebel of the New, and the real name, not the alias Lance Courier, aka the Corner of Logic, Mr. Logic, the Fofo Kage, all that old good shit still in the car. All that old good shit. Still got the blinders on, keeping me cool, keeping the glare out, all that old good shit. And yet another park, diversifying the location, right? Yet all that all that old good shit. You still might hear some sounds in the background, some ambient snores because of that. Right now it's the trees rustling. You might hear some people passing by, who knows? You might hear some air vents, some near a building facility. So fair warning if you want that, then stay. If not, then you know where to go. <laughs> Anywhere but here. But anyway. That's just the brush through the intro real fast because right now I just want to go ahead and say that this is part two of, as you can see, the title screen says that Sayaka Mizuno was she a idiot basically for going ahead and choosing Leon as opposed to essentially anybody else but Leon in terms of who she would try and kill, which if you ask me that's stupid to say. But, hey, people have different opinions. I just want to see if anybody can argue them and convince me otherwise. So, the other week or so, I was talking with CERN, and we ended on a pretty contentious note. A lot of contention there. We weren't outright just going off on each other, which is good. And <clears throat> there were still some things unresolved, though. So, unfortunately, he had some difficulties or whatever things that came up and he wasn't able to meet for again today was when I wanted to do a, a redo or yesterday and so I was like you know it's cool you just hit me up in the future if you ever want to do it again and in the meantime we left on a note more specifically about some stuff that he said he didn't say that I accused him of saying not like you know like you said this you're you're xyz for saying this but no I just I said he said some things and he said basically that I'm strawmanning him and that he didn't say those things. Well, I went back and I'm glad I recorded it. I think I said that in the actual conversation. I'm glad I was recording this because I believe that my point will be proven because I had the recordings of him saying the things that he said he didn't say. And I wanted him to come on to see if there was some context I might have missed and he could clarify what I'm about to play. But like I said, he can always come on in the future. You can always come on in the future, man, and clear some things up. Otherwise... We'll just leave it at this, because I do have some notes that I want to pull out in response to the points he was making in that video, in response to the points that I have right here that I'm going to play, him saying the things that he said he didn't say. So, this is the point I got the stuff on. Don't mind the case, the case is fucking glued together because I'm a cheap bastard and I like to stack money and not spend it on shit. So, it's not the actual phone, it's just the case. This right here is that Google phone, that Pixel, <clears throat> connected to the Bluetooth all around the speakers. Little Honda Dale solar speakers, so I'm not sure exactly how good they're going to be. But let's see what we can hear from this dude right now. Oh shit, gotta turn it up. Okay, so he just said that, like, he admitted to, well, he, I can't remember exactly whether he was disagreeing or not, so I'll just say exactly what I hear right now and see what comes up later. He says that Sayaka could have written the note and, oh, wait, what did he say? Like, Makoto can theoretically have written anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, yeah, he says that Sayaka could have written the note and blamed it on Makoto because Makoto... Obviously, yes, could have theoretically written the note because it was in his room and there's no proof against her saying that it was him doing it since the note was in his, his fucking room. So let's see what comes up next. He just agreed to that. So, I don't know why I ignored this point in the debate, but he said that his interpretation of the scene was that Sayaka would have gone to the, he said this multiple times, would have gone to the door and unlocked it and let Leon in. 
which is fine and dandy, I, I guess. It doesn't make sense to me why she, why she would have done that unless her thinking was compromised. But if she did that, the point is that he also says that he believes the climax reasoning is true when the climax reasoning doesn't show this. The climax reasoning shows Leon opening and unlocking the door and Sayaka, as he also said, was hiding behind a nearby wall down, down the corridor in Makoto's room, blinding herself to where she couldn't even see him going through the room, coming closer to her. So there's no way that the two of those could coexist where Sayaka can be unlocking the door for Leon and, and, and then locking it back. And then Leon is shown in the climax reasoning, closing the door, whereas he said that, you get what I'm saying? He said that the climax reasoning is true. So the climax reasoning blatantly contradicts what he personally believes is what happened. Was probably the no, 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 it means there was flaws, though. I, I, I mean, there are other flaws in the plan. I can't even think right now of what that flaw is, and you haven't pointed it out. So, to well, say that I just pointed it out, so it, what is it? It's the fact that she wrote that note at all. That note should have never been written. No, How is that a flaw? Uh, because it just leaves behind a surplus of evidence. Why should she write that note? There's literally no reason for her not fully up. Your last words cut off. Uh, there's no reason. There's if you wanted to remove evidence, mm -hmm. all of the evidence, 100% of it, you should just pull Leon to the side and say, "I want to meet." Okay, so that's where it cuts off, and this dude's biking on the trail right behind me doing his kids and, and wife so my, my thing is sorry bear with me for a second my, my thing is with this if you go back to what he said just a second ago that contradicts what he said just a second ago because just a second ago he admitted that Saika could have easily blamed anything in that fucking notepad on Makoto because it's Makoto's notepad is in his room so it is not inherently going to be linked back to her just by that basis it is nothing is nothing is inherently correlated to her in that notepad it is all related to makoto it's in his room it's his notepad he said something about the that they can find her handwriting or whatever i guess that's true if there's an ultimate calligrapher there but there's no ultimate calligrapher there so i don't think that's that's valid at all to say and and even even so even if there were an ultimate calligrapher there, it wouldn't really matter in either case, because don't look at me when I end for five seconds and I rave at you and then you just look away. People are so fucking off. It's <laughs> even even if there were an ultimate calligrapher there, I'm not salty. It, it doesn't make a, a difference because if there's an ultimate calligrapher there, what other what handwriting do they have to go off of? You know what I mean? They're locked on the first floor of this room. They have no memories of there being students beforehand two years or whatever before with no problems at all so they don't have access to this information because if they had access to this information whether it's by seeing notes or whatever they wrote in journals or papers or any of that sort of shit they'd be able to piece this together or at least think that something's funny something funny is going on other than the fact that they're obviously locked in at school which is basic shit but since they don't have this knowledge how how is any ultimate calligrapher gonna be able to say oh the psycho this is your handwriting like how would how would he know like unless he like he or she could pull out a sample of psycho's handwriting from somewhere but they don't have access to that they don't have access to the internet they don't have access to anything and i don't think that it would be too far-fetched to assume that Makoto could very slowly and deliberately in the span of that seven, eight, nine, whatever fuck hours, 12 hours, if we're being on, well, not 12, but close to 12 hours, copy her handwriting. I don't think that would be too far-fetched at all. Even her signature, it's not that big of a stretch, you know? It's not really expanding your horizons to think of that. So I don't think that Saika's handwriting has anything to do with her being caught, let alone any of the other shit that could easily be pinned on Makoto or otherwise disregarded as insufficient evidence for anything, except for the fact that it's in Makoto's room, which would just be a, a, just, a, a, just a random shit on top of all the other stacks of evidence that she would be leaving for him to point to him. It doesn't really make much of a difference because if we're being really honest, anyone could have written that note. Like literally anyone could have written that note. 
and put it in his room. It doesn't have to be Sayaka. Makoto could say it's Sayaka. It could have been fucking Aoi. <laughs> like, as long as no one sees the person going in and putting and touching the notepad, anyone could have written it. It could have been Leon himself. It could have been uh, Mondo. It, like, literally anybody. It could have been Mukuro. So, you know, she was still alive back then. There's nothing stopping anybody from going in that room and writing in a notepad as long as the room is technically unlocked and no one is there to, to point out that they did it, you know? It, you know, more than one person because, again, this is the whole hearsay thing. Makoto could say it's Sayaka, but he, it doesn't fucking matter because no one's going to be able to believe that for sure because no other witnesses. If she gets killed, right. then it cuts off anything that she planned to do. It's, it's like saying... Well, yeah, exactly. Right, right. We don't know what she was planning after. So, how can you say that and then... In the same in the same argument, round about and then say suddenly that it's, it's certain that she was going to not do anything with that note, that imprint, because... Or, or Leon's note, because she hadn't at that moment before killing Leon. Like, you blatantly contradicted yourself there. You said that we don't know what she was going to do because she died, which is an obvious fact. We don't know what she was going to do. Maybe she wasn't going to dispose of the note. Maybe she would have just forgotten that shit. But my my theory assumes that she wouldn't forget obvious shit. But regardless, you can't go ahead and make assumptions just so you can fit your narrative. It, it's, it's, it's forcing an argument that doesn't make any sense at all. It's... Quite frankly, it's a slippery slope argument. You can't say that because A happened, B isn't going to happen, or wasn't going to happen, or vice versa. You can't say that because B happened, that means that A didn't happen, or vice, you know, all that, all that sort of shit. There are sequences of things, but they have to be logically connected. You can't say just because of the fact that things happened in a certain sequence that they were always meant to happen that way, no matter what. That's... It's stupid. You, you, you literally can't say that because you don't have the perspective to be able to say that. Only God can say that. Only God can see across all the different possibilities of the fucking multiverses or whatever fictional character you want to give that ability to. But we, we don't have it. You would assume that she would do as much as she could to dispose of evidence leading up to the point where she has to kill him? Does that make sense? I'm going to pause this right here. Why would, we, why would we assume this? Why would we assume that she would ha go ahead and dispose of all the evidence before killing him. I'm not saying it's a, a dumb thing to not to uh, to do that, but not doing it isn't any worse. None of this matters unless you've already killed him. If you if you're going ahead and putting that note in, in under his door, and then he doesn't show up, you're not implicating yourself in any murder scheme. He just didn't show up to your room, so it's called off. You don't you don't go ahead and do anything at that point. It's, it's like, it's I don't want to put words in your mouth, but since you're not here, you can clarify later if if you disagree with what I'm saying. But it's like you're saying that if somebody finds the note, she's automatically damned. No, if somebody finds the note after she's killed the dude and they see like her walking away from his dead body, then she's damned. And like if they like well, they, they, but then if they see her walking away from his dead body, she's damned anyway. But just because the note is there doesn't mean like she could give Leon the note and then Leon could go and instead of going to her room, he could give it to I don't know, um, Kiri Giri, and Kiri Giri would open the door because she doesn't give a fuck. She she doesn't, and then but, well. She, she wouldn't even be in her room, but let's just assume that she's in her room and not doing some uh, sneaky, sneaky shit. She would open the door because she doesn't give a fuck. She'd be like, oh, so this is Saka. I wouldn't go in there. You never know what's gonna ha what she might be planning. And she ha might have a motive to kill you because of how, how shaken she was by the video. Leon's like, oh, okay, good idea. And then from then on, he's suspicious of her. And Kirigiri might be too, but they don't really have any proof of anything. And at that point, she could go ahead and attempt it with somebody else. Or they could alert everybody else, and then, what? Like, you you aren't, unless they're, well, they are a class of idiots, but unless they're very mean-spirited idiots, they aren't going to assume that Saika was going to kill him just by reading that note. It doesn't make any sense, especially since it would sort of back up 
what she said with Makoto, the fact that she was scared and she just wanted some sort of, or well, in this case it would be company, but some sort of soothing. It makes sense because she sort of has some sort of connection to Leon, or whatever she could make up. It doesn't really matter. The point is there's no, <laughs> there's no proof that the note would lead to anybody being able to say that she killed, she was going to kill him. There's no proof at all. Let me finish seeing what you're going to say, though. I mean, yeah, but just as easily she could have well, run it afterwards. You, you want to... Yeah, and that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could have... And he just agreed with you. just agree with me. She could have disposed of the note after killing him. Anyway. That's, anyway. That's not even what we're here to talk about, but... Uh, oh, this is at the beginning. Okay, I'm just saying that yeah. anything she yeah. does yeah. or doesn't do... Yeah, she could do it afterwards. Yeah, there is... She could. That's why I'm. This, this point is like not even that big of a deal anyway because mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> like you say that, and then the entire last twenty minutes of the argument. <laughs> maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's fifteen minutes. The entire last seven minutes of the argument was just trying to state that Sayaka's plan was flawed just because of that notepad imprint that she hadn't disposed of before killing Leon. Like, and, the, you know, not even that, just the fact that she wrote in the notepad at all, you're trying to say that that is a big, you said verbatim, I think, like, this is a major flaw in her plan. Like, this is a serious fucking issue. You you just said that it's not even that big of a deal, like, you said it's whatever. You literally just said it's whatever. And then towards the end, you go ahead and change your mind, and suddenly this is the crux of any pitfall in her plan. This is where anything that can go wrong originates. If it starts as a notepad, it will branch out into all these other fucking uh, shits that are holes in her plan. Like, it's the weak point. It's the chink in her armor, in her plan's armor. And I find that very disingenuous. But I'll go ahead and talk about that a little, a little bit more later. All I just want to say is that you're going ahead and saying that her not disposing of the notepad means that she wasn't going to dispose of it because she didn't clean up but it doesn't make a difference whether she does it before or afterwards she still cleans up it's just if she could if she doesn't kill leon she doesn't get to clean it up because she hadn't done it yet meanwhile if she cleans it up and then leon kills her again it, it doesn't matter because she's she's fucking dead so i think she would rather be alive and worry about killing Leon, which she knew was what she really needed to focus on, then worry about a fucking scrap of paper. The next one. Even if you say, even if you say, she signed it, but even if you say that it was, if, even if she wrote explicitly to fuck me, come over here to fuck me, she could have said it was Makoto. Oh yeah, and that. Like, Makoto, I mean, even if you say, even if you say, she I recorded some of these more than once by accident. Her plan was See, that that's what I just said. Like, he said that that is the chink in her armor. Like, from that flaw originates all the other flaws. He didn't even say what the other flaws are. All he said was, and again, I'm, 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 I know it might seem a little bit rude that I'm referring to you in third person, but it, it's hard because I got to address the audience as well, so that's why I would have preferred you come on. But we can go ahead and do that again. So don't mind. It's, I'm just doing this naturally. I'm not trying to be intentionally rude to you. You said it. Like, because she didn't dispose of the notepad, there's this web of flaws, this interconnectory web of flaws that we can derive from the fact that she didn't dispose of the notepad, but she didn't actually say what any of those flaws were. You just said that because she had one flaw in her plan, she had all these other flaws. You could say she had all these other flaws. You can say anything, but th if there's no proof to back it up, it doesn't matter. You could say that Sayaka was the ugliest bitch on the planet, but, okay, well, for one, that's subjective, but two, it's not true <laughs> like it's not fucking true and it doesn't matter because there's no proof to back it up okay fine we can go to something a little bit more realistic you could say that because um you could say that because i uh, i don't know uh ice uh the the immigration detaining motherfuckers 
went ahead and detained all those Hispanics that they're Nazi sympathizers. Bro, this isn't to big up ICE or anything like that, but if you're just saying shit without proof, you could literally say anything. You could say that they're, they're fucking evil uh, Satan spawn. They're fucking aliens. You could say, you could you can literally say anything you want to say, but unless it's backed up with any sort of hard evidence or proof, it doesn't matter. This is intrinsically flawed because there is no proof. Say, like Again, this is a slippery slope argument. There is no proof that what you what do you call it the the notepad was not going to be disposed not the notepad the, the sheet of paper the imprint was not going to be disposed of or leon's imprint it would be dumb for her not to and it's also a non sequitur which means the logic that you established in the end doesn't follow the preceding logic i'll probably be doing this reverse the end logic doesn't follow the preceding logic because you said that because this one thing is wrong everything's going to be wrong that's it's that's not how that works the, it's illogical. It's an illogical train of thought. And that's another kind of fallacy, too. I forgot what that fallacy is. Damn it. I'm going to just put it in the subtitles. It's not a mark of shame to have to sub shit because you can't think of it while you're on live. Oh, he hadn't pointed it out. It's not even the fact that he said, like, he said the notepad is the flaw that he just pointed out, but all these other flaws, he didn't point them out. Like, let's go back again and see if we can hear them. And what are those? What, what are they? Contradicting himself. But again, you, you see what I'm saying here, right? You could have gone ahead and said what the other flaws are, but you didn't because there aren't any. And he did that again. He said there were like tons of evidence against Sayaka's plan being well established. And he only listed one thing. And that wasn't even evidence. It was again. <laughs> faulty logic. Is that a flaw? Uh, because it just leaves behind a surplus of evidence. Why should she write that note? There's literally no reason for her not to pull the up. Let me look this up real fast because a surplus doesn't mean that something exists. Let me. I, I, I thought a surplus means you have too much of something or, or more of something than you need it. Let me see. If I am misremembering or not. Yes, an amount of something left over when the requirements have been met. An excess of production or supply over demand. So I'm... I'm His point is to try and say that she shouldn't be leaving any evidence behind at all. And that even one thing is too much, I guess, is what, is what he's trying to say. First of all, this isn't evidence that he can leave by, that she can leave behind and damn her. The most that that can happen, unless someone literally catches her writing in that book, is that she can blame it on Makoto and make her plan even stronger, make her excuse even stronger. That's the that is the worst thing that can happen with that that notepad. But to say that there's a surplus of evidence doesn't really make much sense anyway because it's one thing. It's only one thing that gets left behind, and it's not even evidence that points towards her because this is in Makoto's room. Again, there's no ultimate calligrapher there, and even if there were one there, they wouldn't be able to operate because they don't know shit about Saika's handwriting. So, yeah. And, and even if they were the ultimate Saika, and they happen to know shit, just because they say it doesn't mean, just because they say that they, they could have sworn that this is her handwriting doesn't mean shit. Like, again, the, the physical evidence of it being in Makoto's room is stronger than someone's potentially faulty memory. You, you, you talk about things like identifying a suspect visually. What did he look like? Oh, he had black hair. He was uh, light skinned. He, uh, whatever you want to say. I don't really care. Brown, brown eyes, jacket on. It was black jacket, leather jacket. You could say all this shit. And then it turns out the person was completely the opposite, or you missed a few vital points of his description. And it's because when you're at a moment like that, you don't really recall the fine details. A, a, a crucial moment, you don't recall the fine details. And at the same time, when something's happened a long time ago, 
but we're tapping before a lot of other crucial moments that are actually important to your life, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't remember the fine details of those small, trivial things. So, someone like Kiri Giri wouldn't be inclined to believe the ultimate calligrapher in this case if they existed because it's hearsay com compared to what we actually have, and that is the shit is in Makoto's room. Again, with that surplus, with that surplus thing, that surplus thing, two things here, okay? One, it's not a surplus of evidence, okay? Because there is no amount of evidence that that you would want to have left behind. So it's she's she's not going to be like that. That doesn't really make any sense in terms of logic. I mean, it doesn't make any sense in terms of semantics, I guess. It's like saying you stole too much money. Like you don't want to steal any money. You don't want to leave any evidence behind. But second of all, the evidence, whatever fucking evidence, she could be like dragging his fucking body down the hallway, which would be very dumb and it would be very dangerous to her plan. But none of this matters unless she gets caught. As it so happened, nobody left their fucking rooms. So what I'm saying is that if this plan goes completely smoothly, people start doing the investigating and they find shit, that's her plan fucking up intrinsically. You can't say that just because she, she created some evidence that is going to be found later on down the line when they're actually looking for the evidence. Because that's to suggest biasedly that they're going to be finding that evidence 100% fact. You don't know that. And as a matter of fact, the only reason any of the evidence was found was because Leon left it behind. The switched nameplates left behind. The uh, everything really Leon is doing left behind because he should have been the one to clean it up. He either didn't know about it or he created it and left it behind. So to say that Sai, because uh, that Sai, anything that Sai could did would have been found is disingenuous to her because she didn't get a chance to do anything. It doesn't fucking matter if she created notepads and just like sticky sticky padded them on Makoto's door, or taped it on his door, or tapped them to his door, or is knocking on his door and da doing a victory dance and all that shit. If no one sees this during the actual investigation or, or catches her in the act, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So to be a little bit more serious, that notepad there, she could have created however many fucking notepads she wanted. She could have sent however many notes she wanted to Leon's door. And unless somebody sees her doing it, it doesn't matter. Because the, she can blame it on Makoto afterwards. And unless somebody has irrefutable proof that she had written them during the investigation and they come across those notes in the fucking first place, then she gets away scot-free. Because there's nothing linking it back to her. There's nothing linking it back to her at all. She has those notes. She disposes of them. What evidence is there? It's, she had a surplus. It's gone. Or she, she had a, a surplus as in one evidence piece and it's gone. It's it's like you... you I don't even want to... I'm not even sure what to say. It's very simple. If you do something... And you need to cover it up. You cover it up. It's done. It's like it's like writing on. Uh, it's like you wrote the wrong answer, and then you erase it, and then write the right answer. Well, well, before you erase it, you wrote the wrong answer, so you, you it's wrong. I'm not gonna accept it because, like, imagine if your teacher did that shit. Like, imagine if you were writing on a test, and you were taking a time test, and you're under pressure, so you accidentally like wrote the wrong number, and you're like, oh, see, I gotta erase it. I saw you erasing. Nope, that's a surplus of wrong answer. So I'm I'm going back to the original one. That's evidence. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> I'm surprised I can get through these fucking outlandish analogies, but they they make sense, right? Because this is shit that doesn't 
fucking matter. You don't, you don't have the, uh, imagine that eraser was so good that you didn't see what the original number was. Imagine that the teacher just saw you erasing. Or well, not even that. Imagine that, uh, I don't know. I can't even say it, man, because no one would have seen her, would have seen her disposing of the evidence. No one would have seen anything left over. No eraser shavings, nothing. No streak marks because she would have disposed of it. I can't even do a perfect Wonder Woman analogy because she, the bitch would have fucking cleaned everything up, ideally. So to assume that she wouldn't is just trying to go around that shit because it's too hard to face the facts that if she cleans shit up, it's fucking spick and span. Let's move on again. That's not removing the evidence. That's making no evidence at all. And, and even still, there would be evidence. The evidence is that you, um, uh, what is it? The evidence is that you switched the nameplates. And before the nameplates are switched back, that's still evidence. Because the nameplates are switched to where Sayaka and Makoto's room, Makoto and Sayaka's room. And Makoto's still in Sayaka's room. It, so uh, they see her leaving the room. That's it. But it doesn't really matter because it's it's so fucking it's it's so fucking small. This shit is so small. Her plan is actually kind of hard to discuss. No matter how much I go over it, because there is so little that she did wrong in it. You can't even really come up with scenarios as to what she could do better, or, or any anything like that because she did. Everything pretty much right, and except for the actual killing Leon part, she did everything right in terms of the planning before that, and it just sort of irks me. Well, not even really. It doesn't even. It even. It perplexes me to see people question this, because I can't even question it. I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Next. No, she, she said that she did think Sayaka attacked first, but that she faltered in her plan. Oh, she That's said what that. Oh, she really said that? Okay, that. fine. I'm not even going to verify it. Yes. Even if she said that, how does she know that? I'm not even going to verify uh, it. How does she know it? Because it's inferable from the evidence provided. I guess she's saying that. Circle logic. What's yeah. the evidence that shows definitively that Sayaka slung first? Uh, I mean, the only thing that shows it in the entire game the only thing in the entire game. Wait, you faded. Are you, uh, sort of, what'd you say? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I have to sit, like... The only thing that... It, I, I don't even give a fuck what he said right now. Uh, he said... Well, I'll go back. And I'll play the rest. But he said that the... Uh, he, this is the qualifier. The only thing that shows that Saika attacked first in the entire game. He literally said out of his own mouth, sir, and you said that there is only one thing in the entire game, and it is not Kiri Gary, that shows definitively that Sayaka attacked first. Only one thing. So all the other shit you're bringing about people, well, it must have been Sayaka is what the class said. Or, now do you see now Makoto, she wasn't an innocent victim in all this, which is has nothing to do with saying that Sayaka attacked first, but trying to use Kirigiri's words. None of this matters, because you said yourself, there was only one thing that does not, it's not the class, it is not Kirigiri, it is not Makoto. There was only one, it is not the, the strikes on the whatever the fuck, it is not the paint on whatever the fuck, it is not the scratch marks on whatever the fuck. There was only one thing, not to one. In the entire game that shows that Sayaka struck first, which doesn't even show, but like states that Sayaka struck first. And what is this? In front of my computer, and I was explaining that. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the, the only point in the game the that only like point. 100% says that Sakura or Sayaka went first is when Monokuma tells Sakura. Which I asked him to find, and he didn't find it. Like I said, the only thing that you could even state is the narrative playing in favor of Leon being the victim in this, 100%. It, 
is if there were a Monokuma file or Monokuma said as much that Sayaka attacked Leon first. We have neither of those. Nothing in the Monokuma file says who struck first, and Monokuma doesn't say who struck first. And Junko doesn't say so either afterwards. And Mukuro doesn't say anything. So we don't have any way of knowing, and we don't see any footage. We don't have any way of knowing who struck first. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm being unbiased in this. But he's trying to guess as to who struck first after admitting out of his own mouth. And he, he has the shit there. Like, he was looking at the game. Not even the Let's Play. Like, actual footage of the game. You would see it. Uh, he tells me to look at the video and, and stuff like that in the last debate. But he tries to say, regardless of that, that there is evidence. After saying that there is only one thing that could possibly say that the narrative points to Saika being the, the instigator here. The one who did the first strike. It doesn't make any sense, man. Like I said, there's a difference between characters saying shit because characters are different people and <laughs> with their own opinions and, and lives and the first, uh, the third person and the third person omniscient narrator saying something. Omniscient meaning they know everything. Narrator meaning the author wrote. In most cases, the author. I guess in this case, it could be Junko or the author, the, like the actual whoever wrote this shit. But we don't have the latter. We don't have Junko slash whoever wrote this shit. All we have is the character saying shit. And the, narr and the narrative itself is pushing this agenda of distrust. We don't know what's going on. We don't know who to trust. We don't know which side of the story is true. That's the basis of Dongan Rampa, and that's a great way to start the game out. But people try to say, "Oh, it's Saika because we, we because uh, the the marks on the sheath." No, that's not evidence of anything. It's not evidence of it's it's a fucking dead fucking end. It is a you crash into a fucking wall. That's where your evidence leads you. A dead fucking end. You're done. You just said it. You just said that the only thing that could show it is Monokuma, and Monokuma didn't show it. Because if you go back and look at the shit there, like I'm playing it here, I have nothing to hide. If you go back and look at the shit there in the first part of this uh, conversation, you couldn't find anything about Monokuma. You couldn't find anything about Kirigiri saying who struck first, verbatim. You could, or even implicitly, you couldn't find anything about, anything about Leon saying who struck first. You couldn't find anything about anybody saying definitively that they knew <laughs> that Sayaka struck first. No one knew who struck first. He said, it must have been Sayaka, the idiot said. But no one knew who struck first, and Monokuma wasn't going to say shit, because whatever. The narrative didn't want to say that. It would have made the case less powerful. Going on. Yeah, the manga is so fucking stupid. You know what? I should sort of do a video of explaining exactly why the manga is so stupid. The manga has multiple scenes that directly contradict both the anime, which isn't canon, and the game. Which, I, I can do that. I really only care about Sayaka's part in this, because people will quote, The Helion was just, you see it happening. In the manga panels, Leon was going and he was boom and boom and woo. Saika, calm down. That's not how it went, and it doesn't make any fucking sense. But people will quote the manga anyway because, well, you know, Leon is the number one baseball player in the world, man. He is the coolest dude in the world. He would body that bitch. You see how buff he looks? And I admit, he does look pretty buff in the intro cinematic. <laughs> not in the fucking game, but that's beside the point. Or his execution. But I should go ahead and say why the manga is fucked up. Ooh, I wonder when I can do this video. I could do it now. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna say exactly why the manga is complete bullshit compared to the game. And why you should not equate the two at all. Reason number one. All the, all, like, pretty much all the dialogue is abbreviated. And none of it is completely accurate. Accurate meaning one-to-one. -one. Accurate meaning they say the exact same shit they said in the games. You can't have them saying something different in the manga than in the games and saying that they said the exact same thing. It doesn't work that way. That's very simple. You can't say, I can't say car and then say vehicle and say that I said the same thing in that instance. It, I didn't. I said, I said vehicle in that instance. 
I didn't say car. And a vehicle doesn't have to be a car. I, this is simplifying it, but not really because everything that they say is different than in the games. And in some cases, it's drastically different. Like you will go to Sayaka in her room where there's no evidence of this at all. And she's being a selfish bitch, like saying, Mon uh, what, what is the shit she says? She's like, oh, there's someone who I can I can trust. Why does he why does he want me to kill aka Monokuma? Why does he want me to kill these people? And then a split second later, there's someone I can trust. He wants me, he wants me to succeed. I was being so so stupid trying to rely on this my own. Now he can help me. I hope he gives me a good answer. Or some some stupid shit. Immediately she goes from being conflicted. To, I'm resolved to kill somebody now. I hope he gives me a good answer, meaning Makoto. In like the span of like 20 seconds, it makes no sense at all. And this is considering that she'd been d dwelling on this in her room for the better part of a few hours, I would say. I mean, it does a time skip. So there was no reason for it at all. Whereas in the game, we don't see what goes on in her head at that time. She just goes to her room and it goes back to Makoto thinking about things because... Well, otherwise you get stupid shit like what they happened in the manga. Even before that, you got like uh, scenes where Makoto is trying to interfere with Byakuya and Mondo. And then he just says, don't fight. And then the dude looks at him, Mondo looks at him and then says, shut up and hits him. Which isn't at all why he hit him. But he just like glares at him like, what the fuck do you, what the fuck is you in my face for? Why are you yelling at me? And hits him. The, the subtext was meant to imply that, he, for one, he couldn't control his emotion, but yet th that's one thing. But two, he was feeling like upset over the fact that Makoto was being the better man, the bigger man in this situation. But here he just hits him like, the fuck are you staring at? The fuck are you talking to? It's very stupid. And just like immediately hits him. Then after that, you, you have an art book where Sayaka is stated to be carrying Makoto. She volunteers for it and carries him after he's knocked out by Mondo to his room by herself. In the manga, she she volunteers to do it, I think. And then after that, does she volunteer to do it? I I can't even fucking remember. <laughs> Actually, I don't even think she volunteers for it. I don't think she she what the fuck? I'm looking at this shit right now. She didn't volunteer for it. If Nayagi Kun didn't try and stop them, something might have happened. At any rate, we can't leave him alone. Someone must carry him. And and then and then so then Sakura picks him up, and Ari is all shocked. Ah, oh, Sakura Shan, it's strange to carry men around. And then and then Leon's like, I'll carry him. And Sakura's, <laughs> wait, and then he's like, with Mizuno chan and then Mizuno, Sakura's like, eh? <laughs> it is the complete opposite of what actually happened according to the official art book for the games, which is canon for the games, that says that Sayaka volunteered to do it because she felt, well, it's in, my, it's in my thesis, but because he basically gave her some hope, a little bit of hope by stepping in between those assholes like that because that's the type of per the cynical person she is and Makoto was saving her for that. She says pretty much as much in the games and the thesis goes into that more. But here is just all fucked up and she's like she's she follows him and and isn't Naegi kun heavy and uh, what the fuck I I I, okay, I'll admit, I saved the pictures to look at them later, like at some future time, not any time expecting to do this now. And I just decided to go ahead and do it just because why not? I'm, I'm right here. I got extra battery on my phone, but she's just walking alongside him. Makoto's right there. Isn't he heavy? And then, and then doesn't see anything about Makoto after that. You're a super high school level baseball player, right? Is that why you're so calm about this? That is the last she says about Makoto. Completely, just completely ignoring her mindset. <laughs> so that what happens later in the games and what she says about that whole speech to Makoto, giving giving her hope and and helping her have uh, like have confidence in herself and inspiring her to 
be like him instead of all the other ultimates. Just completely throwing that shit out the fucking window. What the fuck am I looking at? Being a musician must be glamorous, right? I, 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 why don't we visit the cafeteria? What an easygoing person. <laughs> don't get into the entertainment industry with such frivolous thoughts, Kuwata Leon. <laughs> She said this, or she she thought this. <laughs> what a bitch! Why did they make her into this? What did they do? I mean, she she is sort of a bitch in the first game. I won't deny that, but she has a much better reason for it, and it's much more two sided. Here she's just being an asshole. Uh, this is anything else you could use for self defense? Blah, blah blah. I'll protect you. Nagi Kun, you will. I don't even want to read this shit. Let me skip all this shit. I'll be here for a while. I don't fucking skip the entire scene. The fuck is she doing? Maiza no san. Maiza no san. Maiza no san. She didn't stand up. She tried to. She she tried to run away. When he was right behind her. You can't. Like. I get the manga trying to fill in for scenes that. Weren't shown in the game. But you can't have a scene that was shown exactly one way in the game. And then blatantly contradicted by having something else happen in the manga. And then say. Well you can. But you can't say that the manga is canon in that case. At least not the main canon. It would be some secondary shit. So you can't use it to support your argument. For the. Like in the game. Saika was so out of it. That. Until Makoto came up, she wasn't responding. And then when she did respond, she was like out of it then. She was like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm fine. And she wasn't even thinking about it. She was just like giving an automated response there. She was completely just cold. And then in this shit, she, she, shake, no, she stands up before he even gets to her. And then she starts shaking. And she's... She has her hand over her mouth. She's shaking uncontrollably. Okay, but but she's standing up already. And then she turns when he says, "My no sign." She's immediately alert. That is a huge different mindset. You cannot be immediately alert like that. Like, and and say it's the same thing. Saika was so she was almost basically catatonic. Like, for those of you who don't know, who don't know what that means, she was almost as though she were unresponsive to any external stimuli at all. Like, nothing going on outside of the horrible thoughts going on running around rampant in her mind was affecting her. Nothing else was getting to her. She was just she was just sitting there, and she was blanked out. It didn't affect her until he got up in her grip, like, up in her space, and then started talking to her. But here, she's already alert, basically. Like, all, she's standing up already, and then, and then he... Comes in, and all he says is Mizuno son. Like, he doesn't yell or anything. He just says Mizuno son. And then she turns around immediately. Like, she's on edge. She is completely responsive, completely alert. And then she just dashes and and gets away from him. No. He grabs onto her and she tries to, uh, she doesn't get anywhere. Like, she tries to run. He grabs onto her immediately. And then she tries to, like, shake off of him, but she's so hysterical that she can't really throw him off like she would otherwise be able to do. And so, this com <laughs> contradicts that as well. Here, she just smokes him, which would happen if she were able to smoke him, but he was right next to her. So that shouldn't be there. And she didn't really want to get him off of her. Like, she was, like, she was, she was lashing out, but at no one in particular. If she were trying to hit him off of her, she would be able to do so, but she was just, like, flailing out at the sky, like, at the world, at Monokuma, you know, at the force that was holding her back from being able to be happy in life at that moment. Here is just, none of this context is conveyed, man, it's all so fucked up. And then, I'm skipping the rest. She, oh, well, what, what happened? Please, please, please promise me Nike Con. No matter what happens, please continue to support me. No matter what happens, we'll always support each other. And then in her room, she says, "There is no way I could be calm after seeing that video." That's when she yells that. 
it like I said, she did I say that? But whatever. She she said, uh, uh, yeah, she said like in a catatonic type of state. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm calm. I'm all right. And then she realized what she was saying, that she was giving an automated response. And then she was like, no, how could I be calm? There's no way I could possibly be, be calm. And then she just started yelling at him. And then she started yelling at, like, just the world. She's like, I want out. Let me out right now. And she started shaking. And then, and then Makoto was, like, trying to stop her from leaving, trying to calm her from breaking down. And she's like, well, Mizuno-san, Mizuno-san. That's what happened. Here she doesn't yell at all until she's alone in her room because the manga's not canon. So this is that shit I was talking about. She's like, what should I, I have to hurry and get out of here. What should I do? Should I kill someone? That's impossible. I couldn't ever do such a thing. In the first place, I'd have to kill her without anyone finding out. Now she's automatically thinking about it. <laughs> Didn't take too long, huh? I'll have to leave the same fucking uh, sentence. I'll have to leave here with you. Aha. <laughs> Bingo. Now I can do it. I absolutely will at any cost. <laughs> That's right. I have Nayaikon, and he said he would help at any cost. I hope he gives me a good answer. Really? <laughs> and like the same sentence, like, okay, not the same sentence, but the same fucking mind state. It doesn't even change. Like, it is literally in the same train of thought. She goes from being from being against it and not knowing what to do to oh yes aha this is what i'll do no fucking sense at all no fucking sense people quote this shit as being canon it doesn't make any fucking sense man i mean she's she's laughing like a total villainous and glaring menacingly menacingly it it's bullshit it's bullshit and she she does this with no prompting at all like, in, like, the span of, again, like, 20 seconds, she goes from being, what does she think in her mind? I don't even want to say this, boy. Up until now, I've been trying my hardest to not let any unpleasant things get to me. But now, I'm not alone. Total selfishness. She was selfish in the game, but she was at least ambivalent about it. Like, she was at least not, it, it's implied, very strongly, at least, that she did not want to go ahead and, and go through with the plan if there were any other options available but she couldn't think of any so she had to go ahead and and try and frame makoto and kill leon she didn't know what else to do she was distressed she was between a rock and a hard place she felt trapped here it's like oh this is my way out <laughs> makoto i hope you give me the right answer i don't know who i should kill <laughs> she's <laughs> I don't know who I should kill. Uh, okay, to be fair, she might have been like that, but it's just <laughs> following off the last scene. It's like she's really into the shit. Really into it. It does, it's, it's stupid, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't want to skip. I don't want to skip this, but I, I will. I will. You guys can read this shit yourself. Oh, man. And then she apparently came up with the plan in like a few minutes. She is incredibly smart to be coming up with this plan in a few minutes. Was it that simple, guys? Was it that Was it that simple, whoever wrote this? That it only took her... like to, If she really came up with this plan, dead ass in like five fucking minutes, or, or one, is what this manga shows it, then she is the smartest character in that game. Fuck anyone who says otherwise, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going by this bullshit, she's the smartest character in the game. That plan was fucking foolproof. No one knew what the fuck was happening. Until Kirigiri saw that note. That's when she got a hint because she already knew the rooms were switched back because Leon didn't notice. But if, if not for that, no leads at all. At all. So, that is... It, just the notepad, and the, the rooms were switched, and she saw it, because Leon didn't change it. Besides that, everybody else was fucking stumped, and Kyoko had to go off of just that. <laughs> That's all she had. So if you're saying that to, to lead everybody to the right answer, amid mass contention, if you're saying that within, like, the span of a minute, she was able to go from no plan at all to that level of a plan... 
She's the smartest character in the game. I don't give a fuck. At least in terms of critical thinking. What's next? And, and creativity. Mizuno san, I'm sorry for bothering you so late. I'm just a little worried about something. Blah, blah, blah. Since you switched rooms, I won't be suspected. And she's standing there like a. Like she's. Like she actually has some fucking knife skills. Like that's a pretty fucking bad. Fucking badass pose. That's a badass pose, man. I'm not fanboying either. It's fucking ridiculous how they fuck that up. Like they like they could have made her hold that badass pose. Suddenly she's she's not so sure. What am I doing? And then Leon's at the door. Oh, I gotta go through with it. Or something like that. Something to give you a little bit more attention, make you feel a little bit more sorry for Sayaka, make you feel a little bit more sorry for the circumstances that these guys are in in general. But no, she's, she's got this badass pose, like she knows what the fuck she's doing, and then, uh, and then she just drops the ball. <laughs> Maizuno san, can I come in? So apparently she left the door unlocked. Why? I have no idea. She left the door unlocked and was standing right there in front of the door with the knife out. Yeah, fucking right. She runs straight at him. And, and, and notice how, by the way, the climax reasoning shows her running with two hands on the knife. Thrust position, like like this, like, ah! Like, ah! But here she's running with one hand back, and again, non-canon. I'm not even saying the climax reasoning is canon. I'm just saying that this shit follows nothing. Like, it is its own, just made-up bullshit. So we have this, and he has time to say, ooh ah! And then he whacks something. I guess he hits the back of the door because it shows his shoe tap against the door or or, or that side shoe whatever he whacks something he hits something which means he backs into something because he's backing up but apparently huh Mizuno he has time to say uh, uh, huh Mizuno and then just back into something so that he whacks it and then nothing at all affects that <laughs> nothing affects the outcome of that she, she slashes right past him and she's swinging pretty stupidly but just the fact that he's able to completely air her her strike her her swipe makes no sense i'm not even gonna go back and explain it you know that shit makes no sense i'm not fucking explaining it <sighs> what is this a surprise whoa you can't be serious i hate that shit really like if she has enough force behind her swipe to slash the air and cut his and, and rip his jacket, that that then she can <laughs> But not only can she not hit him, she she can't even get she can't even touch him. But she has enough force to, to swipe basically the air and cut his jacket. Okay, sure. And then she's and then she's like fucking <laughs> Like, she's, she's got, like, the fucking gentle fish shit going on. Or, or whatever that shit is. I, what was that shit? No, no, that's the fucking Sasuke from the Forest of Death. When, when, when he's fighting against Orochimaru, and he's like, I don't, have to, I don't have room to do it. But you know what I'm saying. Like, when he's fighting that, that motherfucker, that kitty pedal bitch. And you know, <laughs> with the Sharingan active. He's like, <laughs> she has perfect fucking form like the, not not really but in terms of like anime standards she knows what the fuck she's doing with that knife but no apparently not <laughs> apparently she has all the skill and strength and speed required to kill this dude but she just can't kill him because he didn't die in the game so we're just gonna make it as cool looking as possible in favor of him she is trying no bullshit to kill this dude. He has time to say all the shit in the world. And and then he he knocks over a table. And how? Even in the manga you can't. You have this entire fucking chapter. You could have made it two chapters. And you can't show how he got out of that, that swipe that hit the air. Like you see it hitting, hitting the fucking air. 
And then it slashes his, his sleeve, cuts it straight open. It, well, apparently she slashes him twice at once, cuts, him, cuts it straight open, and then suddenly he's knocked over a chair. You can't be serious, a table, you can't be serious. Ah! And, and he grabs the katana sheath that he was somehow eyeing, even though he wasn't. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. How how does he how is he able to do this? How is he able to get to the How is he able to knock over the table while evading Saika swings that are faster than I don't fucking faster than sound if they can cut through that fucking shit and and, and not only that, but she can't evade, evade that. And, and uh, Mizano, you Oh, that's what he's been reduced to. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> what did she say? De ah, oh, she's going like, ah. And then they clash. Die, die. <laughs> cling, cling. Oh, apparently they clashed twice here. They only clashed once in the game. If you don't die, then I can't get out of here. But well, she so she's thinking this, but he's he's saying, uh, hey, <laughs> like he's literally saying it like this, uh, hey, 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 calm down, Kuwata-kun, You said your dream was to become a musician, right? So you must understand how I feel, is what she's thinking. But he has time to say that bullshit while he's clashing with her. You, that's what you said. You didn't mean it, did you? You don't understand. You're such a light-hearted person. You really think he'll just let you out of here? You really believed in what he said, didn't you? They have time to just assume all that, like, just jump to the conclusions. And he, this is why he's under attack. He has such a clear conscience to where he's not thinking about anything other than the logic of her train of thought. While she's trying to attack him. And she's crying because... I don't know, he's a lighthearted person. And then, because at first she was la laughing about this. Now she's sad. And then, uh, I don't know, she, she, she cried in the in the span of one panel. Literally one fucking panel. And, and then, uh, when he says, you really believe what he said, didn't you? You really think he would, he would just let you out of here? She's like, ah! And then she's open for a moment because he uh, stuns her with that. And then he wags her, her wrist and breaks her wrist while her guard is down. And she drops the knife and then she grabs the knife and she runs into the bathroom with the knife in her good hand. So he hit her right wrist. I can't recall whether it was her right wrist that was broken or her left wrist. I think it was her right wrist, so that's fine. And then with her left wrist, she uh, her left hand, she grabs the knife. As soon as it hits the ground, like as soon as it clacks on the ground after she drops it, she grabs it, which I'm not sure why it's, is it, was that a tiled room? Let me stop nitpicking, okay? But it, it, it clacks on the ground, it thuds, and then it clacks. Okay, I'm, I'm being a nitpicky motherfucker here. It thuds, and then it clacks. She grabs it on the first bounce. She springs back up before, like, not, not losing a beat after having just had, gotten her wrist broken. She bashes the door with her shoulder to the bathroom doesn't nothing but the with the hand with the door handle no, none of that subtext none, none of that context not even subtext none of that context of how you you got to know how to unlock the door because makoto's door uh handle to the bathroom is is rack she just bashes that shit in <laughs> she's like mm, mm, motherfucker mm. show that motherfucking door she just she she fucking charges into the door. That was a key point in the game. But not here. Mmm. Motherfucker. <laughs> and then Leon doesn't. Because, I don't know. He, got a, he has to get the tools somehow. It shows in the game that he got the tools. You know, because the door was locked and... He can't unlock it, so you know, the doors might as well be locked regardless, is what the game said. The game fucking said that you have to do, open it a certain way, or else you can't get in, no matter how you try to twist the handle. So, the, 
the fucking shit just wants to make it so Saga can bash into it for no reason, really. She just does it because that's creative liberties, I guess. And then, she, oh, no, no. It was, it was because they had her take the knife for no reason because she dropped the knife in canon. And then they can't have her take the knife and then open the door that way, the, the canon way that she did it. So they fucked up by having her take the knife. Then they fucked up again because of that by having her bash the door. And then they fucked up again by having Leon not logically do the same thing or kick it or whatever. He goes back and tries to get the screwdriver out the toolbox to open the door. I, it doesn't make any sense why they do what they do. It's 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 stupid. Why do they do what they do? Why did they do this? Oh my goodness. I'm serious. Why did they do this? There's no reason for it. This is my first time actually reading this straight up. Like, I saw only the when she was dodging, the when she was doing the knife shit before this. And he was... Dun-dun-dun-dun. 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 Dun-dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun. To her slashes. He was like... Dun-dun. dun 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 Y'all know this shit. Dun-dun-dun-dun. That fucking you hockey soda. That's what dun 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 no 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 not editing this out fuck you if you got a problem see me cause this live shit undefeated my name is fucking Lance C seriously Seriously, this is probably motherfuckers looking at me. No one's looking at me. What is your point? It doesn't it doesn't make any sense, like seriously. If you if you try and go ahead and, and justify this in any way, you will run into a dead end. Well he couldn't unlock the door. I mean he couldn't unlock the door. Okay, so why didn't he why didn't he uh, bash it like Sayaka did? Well, because uh, dead end. Well, you know he um, Sayaka had a, the knife in her hand, so that's why she bashed it. Well, why did she get the knife? She didn't have the knife in canon. Um, dead end. Like that's it. And it's simple logic too. It's just two two fucking steps. It's two fucking paths you can take. The right path and the wrong path. I guess the wrong path splits into two branches. But it's so fucking easy to just follow the game. It's not that hard. This game's not that fucking deep. It's not. They're not talking about her case going right, or, well, or anything possibly going wrong in her case, and then trying to have her win anyway. They're just trying to copy the, the game, right? You already know what happened in terms of evidence, but they're making shit up, and it doesn't make any sense. And so she takes the knife into the room, and, and then she's like, I don't want to die. Because I don't know why. She says she the, the door opens up. No, the door rattles. And she's like, I don't want to die. And then she the door opens and she slashes at him. That's the second time. You've raised the same hand. Bullshit. She didn't cut his fucking hand. She didn't cut him at all. She didn't. She didn't cut him. He had no runes on him. You can't say that she was trying to attack him. And she grazed his hand and she didn't fucking graze his hand. And if she did, if she can swing with the four, I don't give a fuck if she's left handed or right handed. If she can swing with either hand, unless she fucking jerks off something major, unless she can swing with that right hand with the force that she can rip his jacket sleeve, <laughs> that slash should not have. What, what, what am I trying to say? That, that there's no way that the cut would be that small. It would not be that small. That would be, that dude would. Mm. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too. Like they're trying to be so fucking fanciful with these creative liberties bullshits. And at the same time, people are actually saying this is serious. You can't be this creative and claim this is canon. And and she is so irrational here. She, he's like, I'm not going to do anything. I just want to listen. I just want you to listen to what I have to say for a bit. And she's like, don't kill me. No, <laughs> I'm not going to kill you, so calm down. 
And then she just keeps, she keeps, uh, it's stupid. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to say it. She, she basically like stabs herself. But going before this, this is the thing here. This is the crucial thing. People try to say all this shit about how Leon got the better of her X, Y, Z. At this scene, you really think he'll just let you out of here? You really think, you really believe in what he said, didn't you? Sayaka was dead even with him for whatever fucked up reason. Doesn't make any sense. Sayaka was dead even with him until he said that. And then she was caught off guard by his words. And then while she was caught off guard, that's when he hit her with, with the sheath. Actually, the fucking thing is unsheathed. He hit her in the wrist with a fucking sword, which was would really fuck her wrist up. But I'm not, I'm not even going to go into that, which is stupid, because he hit her with the sheath, okay? In the game, <laughs> he hit her with the fucking... <laughs> the fucking sword. Did you... Did you... Fucking say... It wasn't super sharp. The Boken, the, the wooden katana wasn't that sharp. But if you hit somebody's knife with a, uh, somebody's wrist with a wooden sword that hard, as hard as he racked it, her... Fuck it. You get, you get in the kendo and you'll see what happens. <laughs> if you do some illegal shit, you'll see what happens. Uh, I'll just say this. It wouldn't look like it did when you found it. It would look way worse than it did. Uh, so, here, here it doesn't even, it's not even, doesn't even look that bad at all. But, um... In the game, it's just some swelling and whatever, some bruising. <laughs> it would look way worse than that. Especially if it's the ultimate baseball star with the ultimate batting skills. Even though CERN wanted to say that it's, o it's only really pitching. Because pitchers and batters, pitchers are notoriously bad batters or whatever. But this somehow that he was able to clash with her and then hit her again before she could react and all that shit just to suit your argument anyway bro, there's so many holes in the shit that goes against Saika that I don't have time for them all all I'm saying here is that if you're gonna go ahead and say that this is true you can't go ahead and say at the same time that this manga is true and that Saika was worse than him in terms of strength or anything because this here shows <laughs> definitively that the only reason she got the better she got fucked up was because she well, hesitated for one, like Kyoko said, but more specifically, she was caught off guard by his words. And what about his words, caught her off guard? We don't know, and we could speculate, but I don't really give a fuck because this, this is the manga, and they have fucked up her personality <laughs> beyond any sort of salvation in this shit. And I want to save my battery, so I don't feel like looking at this shit anymore, regardless. If we're being honest, the funny thing is, this manga bullshit actually backs up my point. The point I made in my thesis, and the point that I probably made in that video, too, that there's, for one, there's no real way to guarantee exactly what happened in that room, in terms of physicality, who got the better of who, in terms of whether the knife or the sword won, or whether Sonic even fucking had the knife, or Leon even fucking had the sword, X, Y, Z. But not only that, but just in general, who was stronger and or more athletic between the two of them. There is no way to know except for the fact that sources point towards Sayaka being more athletic than Leon. And thus you can say that she's stronger than him as well. She's almost unrealistically strong for the size she is and the gender she is. Yes, yes, all that bullshit because of the fact that this is a fictional visual novel but people want to apply real life to it when it only applies to leon but the thing here is the funny thing here is that if you look at the scans she's actually pushing leon like she's pressing him back she is beating him down with that knife against the sheath over and over again to the point that the sheath the sheath falls off and that's how the sheath got lost that's how that's how the bare blade became exposed because Saiko was just pounding him was just relting him so many times with that damn knife and he was trying to hold his guard up he was trying to hold it overhead not to swing back at her but to stop her assault because as you can see she's die 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 clang 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 and his punk ass is just he's trying to stave her off basically there's nothing else he, he can really do so you have this going on and you see exactly here that this is where where it has the clang and a die that's where the mark was formed against the sheath because she was smashing the knife into it so the manga actually backs my point up that Sayaka is stronger than Leon, or at least that we have more evidence towards Sayaka being pointed out as stronger than Leon than the opposite. 
And then besides that, like, look at the conversation. Look at the exchange after this. And he's like, you, you, th that's what you said you didn't. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you see it there. Like, he's, he's reasoning. It says reese. Meanwhile, Sayaka is rearing to kill him. She'd been attacking him the entire time. Not letting up at all. I mean, she, she'd been failing, but she, for whatever stupid plot-related reason, you know, plot armor is basically it. But she'd been attacking him relentlessly, aggressively going after him with that knife the entire time. She's not reasoning. She is not out of breath. She's not gasping. None of that shit. She is, Rao Leon, is, what she said was, it was her dream to be an, a pop star. No, not a pop star, but an, uh, what did she say? It, it was her dream to become a musician, right? So you must understand how I feel. And as she says this, she is trying to kill him. She is, she is preparing to strike him down. As he has lost his sheath, he's lost uh, what would, I suppose, they're trying to imply, protect him from the knife cutting clean through it and, and getting to him or whatever. That was his last line of defense with that sheath. And now that she's knocked the sheath off of him, She's getting ready to end him, to finish him. And he is like, that's what you said. You didn't mean it, did you? <sighs> and he's tired of shit. He's out of breath. As, as is supported by the class photos when he is getting his ass kicked by her in that race. As is supported by the fact that he doesn't practice. As is supported by his frail figure. All that shit. People don't want to say that because short distance sprinting. Short... <laughs> Or you might be able to say, well, maybe, well, you can't say it, but people would say, maybe, you know, Leon was just, you know, he was going easy on her. Like, he didn't want to kill her. He he was just talking to her. He was just trying to negotiate with her. He didn't actually want, he didn't have an end to try and kill her. He didn't, he didn't want to attack her. He was just trying to find out what she was saying. No, because I'll tell you why. The first thing is he wanted to kill her because after he, after she left, <laughs> in the game's canon, she, he went and killed her and no excuses for that. The bitch tried to kill me. So, no, one right there, cold-hearted murderer. Besides that, she she is railing on his ass and he is struggling to defend against her. We've established this. And, sir, he's, he's trying to conversate with her. He's trying to converse with her. But then after this, as soon as he, as he brings up that key point... That that key word that you said it was your dream, didn't you? You don't you don't actually believe uh, Monokuma's lies or, or whatever. And she gets frozen. He immediately takes that opening and he pounces on it. He he doesn't try to reason with her anymore after that. Anything like that. He just immediately, as soon as she's shocked and she's let her guard down, he seizes the opportunity and he slashes well slashes at her wrist and breaks her wrist. And so he does not give a shit like that. He's just, he is, he is frustrated and he is in the heat of the moment trying to get out of the situation by arguing against Sayaka. While Sayaka should not be talking to him at all, she should be just trying to kill him. She's trying to reason with him for whatever stupid reason and say, you should understand my point of view while I'm doing this. And then Leon is, he's being bitched. So he, he says what he can, what he's trying to do to get him out of the situation. And then as soon as it looks like it's going to work, he takes the chance, breaks the wrist, and then it all goes downhill from there. So no excuses. This dude doesn't have any fucking excuses. He is a murderer through and through, regardless of what source you use. Even though this is the non-canon source, again, it backs up every fucking detail I have made since 2015 onward <laughs> it is backed up everything just going over the the manga and how stupid that is i might separate that from this because that was just fucking insane how much insanely flawed logic is in that shit and people actually eat that shit up and they really buy that shit <laughs> they buy the shit then they eat it up they buy the shit then they eat it up and that took about 30 minutes probably more i don't even fucking remember was oh, it wasn't this one. Where was it? No, she, she said that she did think Sayaka attacked first, but that she faltered in her plan. Oh, she That's said what that? Said. Oh, she really said that? Okay, yes. fine. I'm not even going to verify it. Yes. Even if she said that, how does she know that? I'm not even going to verify uh, it. How does she know it? Because it's inferable from the evidence provided. You're going back to the circle. Did I cover this? Oh, yeah, it's the Monokuma shit. Yeah. Yeah, which we don't see. So, next. So, 
I mean, like, which doesn't exist. The way the game depicts this in the manga, uh, mm-hmm. which, yeah, yeah, which manga. Is shaky logic, whatever. Well, mm-hmm. Can we play this? Can, can we play this again? Uh, one more time. Wait, one more time. Listen to this, sir. Uh, the climax reasoning. Which, yeah, yeah, which I'll admit is shaky logic, whatever. What, what did you call the climax reasoning, sir? Say it one more time. I'll admit it's shaky logic, whatever. It's what? Wait, 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 uh, wait, wait. I didn't hear that. Go back, go back, go back. My no, ears aren't what they used to be. Stupid. My ears aren't what they fucking used to be. Go back to it. Oh, all I heard was whatever. One more time. I, it's, I thought I thought I heard something before that. Which I'll admit is shaky logic, whatever. What kind of logic? Which I'll admit is shaky logic, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I can't hear this shit. Which I'll admit is shaky logic, whatever. Oh, uh, shaky logic. He said it's shaky logic, which means it's not strong. And there's nothing to support it. It's bullshit. It's fabricated. It's fallacious. It's made up. It's fucked. Okay? There's some alliteration for you. It is not tenable. You can't defend it. Then he tries to. He says that I never said that the climax reasoning, but well, you know, he'll say it here. But just note this. Because I heard what the fuck he said, obviously. <laughs> but he apparently didn't. So we're going to go back and see what he said towards the end. Yeah, she, she's, Ooh, that's she's uh, gasping. But how do we know that this is what happened? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't. It's inferred, I guess. We don't know. It's shaky logic. These are the two things he said. He said it's shaky logic first. And then he said, we don't know. It's inferring based off of evidence that he said only existed in Monokuma. And that he couldn't procure from Monokuma. He couldn't get anything from Monokuma. So it's evidenced, it's uh, shaky logic that has no evidence behind it, is what he said. And we don't know anything from it. Okay, good. So that's what his thoughts on the cl- climax reasoning. That the climax reasoning doesn't make any sense. Right? That he, said, he said it's shaky logic. The climax reasoning is shaky logic. And he said that we don't know... That what happened in the climax reasoning, in this case that Psycho is gasping and all of that shit, and at first he thought, CERN thought that it was her laughing, we don't know whether this actually happened or not because Makoto wasn't fucking there, and the climax reasoning, as he also says, is Makoto's logic. Makoto's imagination. Let's go to the next one. Because you acknowledge yourself that the climax reasoning doesn't make any sense. hmm And that it's only for the, only for metaphysical because metaphysical is so important that even if it doesn't make sense from a factual logical standpoint. Uh, the, uh, only for meta only from a metaphysical meaning that he was saying the entire time that things were just put in there just to show that a struggle happened or that this is the right things were and that they don't have any in importance to the climax reasoning. This is what he said. If you want to disagree with me, sir, I can I can get that as well because you did say it and I remember that. But let's go back. He said it was shaky logic and he said that we don't know what happened. And he said that the only evidence we have that's 100% definitive pointing towards anything regarding Sayaka attacking first is at uh, Monokuma. And he couldn't find anything about that. So let's read this again. I mean, let's listen to this one more time. Because you acknowledge yourself that the climax reasoning doesn't make any sense. And that it's only from, the, it's only from a metaphysical because what do you mean metaphysical what? is so important that even if it doesn't make sense from a factual, logical standpoint, uh, if that's what the narrative is trying to portray, that's what's real. Right? I don't, I mean, first of all, I don't remember, but I, I know you kept saying that I agreed that the climax I don't know if I, I heard said it. two things about it that I think you're... Uh, shaky logic, and we don't know anything about it. If we don't know what's happening, and it shows something happening, but you admit that we don't know what's happening, how can you say it, it, it makes sense in terms of actually happening? That doesn't make sense. Like, if you, like someone... 
there's a there's planet fucking uh X just outside of the solar system. But well, we don't have any proof of that. Well, yeah, it makes sense though. I mean, could... go on. Uh, two Earth is, I said, um, I guess this is Makoto's interpretation. Of yes. Thing. And I think that's the statement that you were complaining to be. You said it was shaky logic too. You didn't say okay, well, he, he didn't say that he didn't get it. He just said that it, that it was, uh, at least I don't think so. I'm going to see the rest of these because there's more after this. But he said that it was shaky logic and he admits that it's shaky logic. And he says that we, we can't use it to understand what actually happened because it there's no proof of it, which damns that already. And he also contradicts it when he says that Saika does things like unlocks the door and whatnot where that doesn't happen in the climax reasoning. So apparently that's not getting it or at least not wanting to get it and wanting to go on to your own shit because that's not in line with the climax reasoning's reasoning. So, yeah. You said you didn't get it. Mm-hmm. You didn't say that he's still saying it's his interpretation. You're not saying it's factual based on a narrative. You know this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leon, and you weren't able to bring up yeah, evidence as to why Leon was a bad idea in the first place. So what difference does it matter? Well, he does the attack. We don't know this. And you, and you just said, you said that. I'm so thank goodness I'm recording. You said mm -hmm. that you don't know this for sure. You said we during the video that we... That, that, that exactly what happened in the climax reasoning is what happened. You said you don't understand the climax reasoning. Didn't I just play him saying that we don't know what happens in the climax reasoning? I, I literally just fucking played it. He, he... I'm not even gonna go back and play it again. You heard it like, like, a minute ago. We just fucking played it, and I've just been reiterating it over and over again. I'm gonna save my battery at this point, so I can respond to all this. But, you heard it. And that doesn't make any sense. But now you're going back to it? You said it's shaky logic. Doesn't make sense. We don't know what happened in that room. We know that Sayaka is... So you genuinely just don't think Sayaka? I don't know what happened except for that Leon got past Sayaka. And if Sayaka wanted to stab Leon as soon as he got in the room, she would have done so. And that she was fucking sweating buckets and pale as shit. And it wasn't yep. about... The thing she made up with Makoto. It was obviously about what she was going to do. And that's yeah. my point. No one misconstrued it. That's my fucking point, okay? So when people ask me, what do I think? I don't take sides. All I know is what should have happened and what we know from what we got, which is basically nothing. That's all I know. I'm not going to assume shit like most of these people. I'm not going to make up shit either. I'm going to go by the facts. And if it just so happens to turn out that there aren't many facts to go by, then I'm just going to be... Open-ended. Leave it open-ended. Sometimes being honest is better than making up shit so we seem that we're right. Or so that we're in with whatever crowd we want to fit in with. I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, CERN. But what I am saying is that that's what the most of this fan base does. They side with Leon or they side with Saika over some bullshit. And we don't know in either case what happened. Saika could have attacked him first. Leon could have attacked her first. Or someone else could have come in the room. Unlikely, especially for the third one. But we don't know what happened. We don't know. And that's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that if Saika wanted to kill him, she would have killed him. Or at least she would have, at, at the very least, marked him up a bit. Showed that she put some effort into it. Okay? She's not going to... Do any of the outlandish shit that you have to claim she would she would do just to fit your narrative. She's not going to unlock the door, let him in, then lock the door behind him, or, or whatever. She's not, and, and she's also not going to hide behind the wall, which is another contradiction that you stated. She's not going to hide behind the wall and wait for him to come in, because now you're trying to you're trying to agree with the climax reasoning, even though you, you wanted to disagree at first, and and she's not going to fucking do any roundabout shit. Other than either wait until it's the right moment to kill him or distract them so she can kill him. Otherwise, she's just going to kill him if she wants to kill him, which apparently she didn't. There is no way that he can get to that sword unless 
he is let to get to that sword. There's just not enough room. It's not possible. It's not physically possible. Unless he, like, even if he bum rushes her, if she tries to stab him, he'll be stabbed. Even if he manages to survive that encounter and get to the sword and, and whatever, he'll be stabbed or he'll be slashed. Says the thing's running low on storage space. So let's hurry this up because I didn't bring my removable hard drive and let's finish this. Mr. Ryan Leon was a bad idea in the first place, so what difference does it matter? Well, he the attack. We don't she know this. Next. Um, yeah, she, she, Ooh. she's uh, gasping. But how do we know that this is what happened? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't. It's confirmed, I guess. Yeah, we, there it is again. <laughs> I want to say that's a slippery slope. Because that's from the climax yes. reasoning. So I think that's about all of them. Okay, so actually that's all of them. I do want to go back to this one real fast. Just to show something a little bit funny here, at least to me. That's funny because I didn't prompt that at all. I didn't ask him to say that. I didn't lead him or rail him on to say that at all. He just went ahead and said that it's shaky logic on his own. CERN, you said that yourself, that the climax reasoning is shaky logic. And even if you said that a part of it is shaky logic, which that's not what was <laughs> implied at all by what you said, if one part of it's shaky logic, then the whole thing's shaky logic because it's his reasoning. And if his reasoning is shaky, then you can't use it because it's fucking shaky reasoning. And he wasn't there. That sort of backs that up. But you went ahead and said that the climax reasoning is shaky logic on your own. And I didn't have to say anything about that. So this is how you obviously feel. Now, this is going to bring me to the next point that I'm going to try and get across before the sun goes all the way down and I have to find some lighting. All right. So while the assholes are street racing in the background, bad lifestyle really isn't cool at all neither is arguing that Saiko was any bit less than a hundred percent magnificent in chapter one it's not good for your health either but let's get serious real fast okay you see this thing with Saiko and people trying to argue against her is really really fucking dumb because I'm not calling the people doing so dumb i'm just calling their arguments dumb and if you're offended by that then you can go and see me like seriously you can go and try and do a live with me because fine it's your right to be offended and it's my right to say how i feel about the situation it's, it's dumb because they know i'm right like seriously they, they know i'm right i was alerted to how this conversation was going to go when I had that with CERN the other week because he said that he wanted Leon to be respected. Now, most people cannot... I shouldn't even say... You know, I'll fuck it. Just, I'll say it. If you don't like it, then you can see me again, like I said. <clears throat> and that's not trying to make a threat or anything. Like, seriously, you can come in and talk it out with me. It's better than me just having a dialogue with myself. But, but most people cannot have two things coexist. Let me explain. If you like one thing, another thing you don't like as much or you hate, you can't accept the latter. You just can't. You have to prop the former over the latter because it's your preference. I understand that. I understand that very much. Very, 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 very much. But the thing is, when facts come into play, it's bad to try and, and put the same, the same shit out there. Okay, it's, it's, very, it's very bad. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. It, it's bad to pretend as though the facts do not exist because of this narrative you're trying to spin that my preference should be more accepted because you're trying to have your preference accepted has nothing to do with the facts. Saying that Leon should be more respected has nothing to do with the fact that Leon, we have no idea whether or not he killed Sayaka. I mean, not killed Sayaka, we, we know that. Whether or not Sayaka attacked him first. The only reason anybody would say Leon attack, uh, was attacked by Sayaka first without any uh, provocation or, or anything else, or without anything else, just say straight up 100% fact that we know Leon attacks, uh, Leon was attacked by, first by Sayaka. 
It's because they want Leon to be the victim here because they want him to seem more sympathetic than Sayaka. Because Sayaka's a snake. She's a bitch. She did XYZ. She did XYZ to Makoto. Okay, that's Makoto. But that means she would do XYZ to Leon. No, not necessarily. She sent Leon the loat. Okay, yeah, she sent Neon the, the, the note. Maybe she might have had a change of heart. Maybe she might have been struggling to go ahead and go through with it. No, it means she was going to kill him. It means she was trying to kill him. How do we know this? Because the note. When you have to go back to your circular, circular arguments, it means two things. One, it means you're disingenuous. It means that you're arguing off a premise that you know is false. And because you can't bring anything else up to support your premise... To support the fact that in this case you're saying that Saika attacked Leon first, you're going to go back and fall back to that same premise. You cannot argue an argument by repeating the argument over and over again. You can't say that, oh, she got the note, so that means she was going to kill Leon. How do we know? Because she got the note, so that means she was going to kill Leon. How do we know? Because she got the note, that means she was going to kill Leon. So how do you know? Because she got the note, that means you, get, uh, you can't keep doing that because you aren't bringing up any evidence. You aren't making any points to support your premise, to support your main argument. You, you aren't. And the reason you're doing this is because, that's part one, the reason you're doing this is because you know that any other argument you try and put forth does not make any sense. Well, maybe she, she gave him the note and then anything else could have happened. Well, uh, no, because she gave him the note and she was trying to kill. As a matter of fact, he said that he tried to challenge my reasoning as to knowing that she was trying to kill him because of the note but then she tries and like she said like he was like in the last conversation well now you're doing the same thing as me which doesn't mean it's why for him to do it you're using circular logic you're saying that because she gave him the note she was trying to kill him there was an abundance of evidence that it proves she was planning on killing him not trying to kill him there's a difference trying to kill him means that she is he's dead <laughs> okay and and everything, all the planning is different from that. Planning and action are two different things. Walk the walk versus talk the talk, right? So you you have that, and then you have the. I don't even I don't even know what I'm trying to say, man. You you there's no evidence. Like there's literally no evidence, and that's why you rely on the same argument. Because anything else you try to bring up, it's open ended in my favor. It is completely open ended in my favor. Anything can happen in that fucking scene. Not even not scene scenario where Sayaka is setting up this crime. Anything. The note could have been taken by somebody else. And then and then I don't know, slip back in into Leon. Like that is the most far fetched thing possible. There was absolutely no evidence to support it. But there is equally no evidence to support the fact that Sayaka was going to, to, to throw the first strike 100% unquestionable. We don't know that. We didn't see that. And while I'm saying it is possible, we don't know for certain that it's 100% because we don't have the proof that it's 100%. Anyone trying to say otherwise can only say it, can only say that it's so because it's so. So when you pose an argument like that, you're really just bullshitting because there's no way to know that Sayaka was going to do anything because we don't, we simply don't know that Sayaka was going to do anything at all. Okay. We just know that she planned to do it. Whether, whether or not she was actually going to go through with it is an unknown. Whether or not she actually did go through with it is an, uh, actually that, no, that's not an unknown. She didn't because he was alive. As a matter of fact, all I can I can't even say that. Okay, let me be honest here. If I'm if I'm talking shit to anyone else, I'll talk shit to myself. I cannot say that Sayaka did not try to kill him. I can say that she might have half-heartedly tried to do so. All I can say is that her heart wasn't in it. She did not go all in and try to kill that dude. But that doesn't mean that she didn't try to kill him. You can make an attempt and hesitate or not be serious about it, X, Y, Z. But to say that you you made the attempt, uh, that you didn't make the attempt at all is a bit disingenuous. Because I don't know that she didn't try and kill him. She could have. She could have tried to kill him. And then anything else could have happened. Any fucking thing else could have happened. It is a world of possibilities because we don't know 
what went on in that room for the umpteenth motherfucking time. We don't know what went on in that room. And I will say this until the rapture. We don't, and at that point it's not relevant. We don't know. We do not know. As a matter of fact, this shit already isn't really relevant except for the fact that I like Sayaka as a character. But this is just basic honesty here. This is a, a person's character versus another person's character in a debate. And this, these types of debates where simple facts can be accepted are microcosms of why so many people can't get along today and why so much bullshit goes on where people die over petty shit. I'm not talking about super uh, complicated conflicts that have been going on for centuries. I'm talking about like petty shit in the streets because people can't acknowledge facts and can't own up to being wrong. People have to have their biases to the heart to where they're going to do anything to defend them, even if there's even if it's like character assassination, even if you go on alive and lie. <laughs> And it doesn't make any sense to me because it really isn't that fucking serious. We don't know what the fuck went on in the room. Acknowledge it. We don't know. We don't fucking know. Is it so wrong to say we don't know? It shouldn't be. But anyway, let me go to my notes. It's not It's just a fucking video game. And and then you were like, if you can't, if we can't agree, if you're going to say that uh, we can't agree that you're not going to change my mind or no, I'd even say that I said that. I said that this is one case you won't beat me on. I didn't say that he couldn't change our mind. I said that you <laughs> good luck trying to beat me on this because I've studied this shit for years. And then he goes ahead and says, well, you know, if you're not going to change your mind, if you're going to say that, I didn't say that if you pull, if you pull something out that made fucking sense that I wouldn't accept it and that my point of view wouldn't change. He'd done that during the thing. He'd said the thing about the, uh, the, the class rules and how I thought that Leon knew what was going to happen he could have inferred it yes if, if he were thinking about it but he didn't know definitively monica pulled a trick card and nowhere in the rules was it stated that you would be killed or, or even punished for killing somebody and getting caught and i didn't know that and he pointed it out to me and i was like okay yeah you're right you're right you got that but then all of a sudden when i'm not losing it's back to the circle logic because I just cannot admit that I'm wrong, and it's bro. If you're not gonna, if you're gonna say that that you that you're not uh, that you've been taking this studying for this thing for years, and that I'm not gonna beat you on it, we might as well not even have the conversation. Well, you know, technically we might as well not if you aren't gonna present any new points. Because if you're arguing the same thing over and over again, the reason I'm doing these lives isn't necessarily to convince the person I'm arguing with, which I already basically did. It's just to say that even if they're not going to admit it, the audience knows who won. And so whether or not you want to admit it, the person watching knows who won the argument. If your reply to me in the face of a reply that I made countering your points with evidence from the game, a.k.a. no evidence, and that we know there's no evidence from the game, and with storytelling elements from story writing in general, if your reply to me is that, well, if you're not going to go ahead and concede your point, then you might as well not be having a discussion because you can't admit that I'm right. You didn't say anything that was right. You didn't say anything that I find true because there is no truth to what you're saying in, in that regard. There is no truth to the fact that because she wrote in a notepad, she wasn't going to dispose it. That is a slippery slope fallacy to say that something hadn't happened yet so it's not going to happen in the future a meteor hasn't struck the earth does that mean a meteor is never going to strike the earth ever yellowstone hasn't erupted yet in the, in the past uh century does that mean it's not going to erupt ever and don't say that's some bullshit because i just narrowed it down sayaka wrote in a notepad before and threw and threw a note array she wrote in a piece of paper before i i guarantee you and threw it away once to say that she didn't do it at that moment so she's not gonna do it just because maybe she wasn't but maybe she was but to say a hundred fucking percent and ignore my 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 theory that if the plan goes right it's because she does everything right or not not that that if she does everything right the plan goes right just because you want to purport your bullshit th that you said was <laughs> you said was possible from my point of view in the first place that if she throws the note away, uh, that if she writes in a note well we don't know she might have been able to throw it away now all of a sudden you're going ahead and saying that we we, we 
cannot say that she was going to throw the notary a hundred percent. We cannot say that. We have to assume that she was going to keep the note there because she hadn't thrown it away. You're bullshitting. Damn, I'm long-winded here. But seriously, you're, you're bullshitting. You, you went ahead and you agreed with me at first. And then when I started pressing your points and you started running out of things to say because I was invalidating all your points, you went back to the circle logic. You went back to the notepad that you said at, at square one. I played it just now. And you contradicted yourself blatantly on air. Did not give a fuck. I pointed that out. You didn't give a fuck. And you brought up nothing new to support your change in position. You just went ahead and said, well, now we know it. We know it's, uh, that she wasn't going to dispose of it because she didn't do it yet. But you went ahead and said before that that didn't mean that she wasn't going to dispose of it. Well, now we know for certain because she didn't dispose of it yet. You didn't change anything. You're just repeating the same argument now. And now instead of admitting that it's possible that it could be both, being open-minded, you're saying definitively that you're stubborn. And so your view's not going to change, even though you know that you don't have any evidence. So you're saying the same thing that I've already debunked and that anyone can already debunk over and over again and getting mad when I don't accept it. Well, even if I do accept that somebody finds the note, as I already said, she could pin that on Makoto and there would be nothing saying that she's guilty because of the fact that she pinned it on Makoto and it's in his fucking room. And again, the ultimate calligrapher shit doesn't matter. If there were one, it wouldn't matter. But, you know, if you're not going to accept my point, then we might as well not be having this debate. Okay, fine. If you want to go that way, fine. The audience knows who won. It doesn't matter unless they're biased for Leon. But then they're biased for Leon, but they still, they're in denial. They know who won, though. Because that's not a retort. That's just you conceding because you know that you're using circle logic. And you admitted on air that you're using circle, circle logic. And you don't care. And you just don't, because your your love, no homo, not trying to pin that on you, but your love for Leon is that strong, you aren't going to acknowledge any alternative, which doesn't have to say anything bad about Leon. You already said that he made a very stupid bunch of mistakes in cleaning up the evidence, but you just can't acknowledge that maybe he might have attacked Sayaka first, irrationally. Or maybe Sayaka wasn't planning on attacking him first because he has to seem so sympathetic. And Sayaka, who was against him, fucked up in her plans because, you know, that makes Leon look better. I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why you do it. The notes start off by saying the narrative doesn't tell us who did what. Again, the narrative doesn't tell us who did what. The narrative is the either the narrator saying something, which it doesn't make any difference because the narrator in this case is Makoto or the third person omniscient narrator saying something in this case that would be the story writer or I suppose you could reason it out to be Junko but not not really it's sort of a perspective thing but Junko, Junko would know and Monokuma would know and the Monokuma file would show what happened in that room exactly Monokuma lies but it <sighs> That's not, that's beside the point. The point is that none of that shows it. The only thing we have to go by is that Makoto was being bitched by everybody and then Kirigiri saved him and then he turned on Sayaka based on the, the fact that scratch marks on the sheath and switched nameplates. So I'm not saying that that doesn't mean anything. It does prove that she was planning to kill Leon and frame Makoto but what it doesn't prove is that she attacked him first and so I don't I don't even think Makoto said that well yeah she he didn't even say that and Kerry Geary didn't say that some random idiot in the class who I don't feel like looking up said that because they were all against him and they were all mindless idiots as is most of that class the 78th class in that in that series and so that's not the narrative Unless that random idiot happens to be the third person omniscient narrator in case they're fucking around and jerking off instead of taking this shit seriously because whatever, <laughs> whatever reason you want to fanfic that out to be, it's not the narrative saying it. It's that random person saying it and whoever else is an idiot in the audience agreeing with them. And Kirigiri didn't back them up on that point verbatim. She said, you see now, Makoto, you're being a fuckwad, okay? Get your head out your fucking ass. Stop your whining! You are acting like a little bitch! Suck it up and get off your stinking ass!
she, she said, you're about to fucking die over a fucking broad. Stop being inane. Get serious. It's your fucking life on the line. Huh. <sighs> she didn't say anything about Psycho striking first. Because she wouldn't know that. And she presumably has some integrity as a detective and logical reasoning sense to, to admit this internally and not go ahead and jump to stupid inane conclusions. Now, I'm, I, I roasted her and talked about, how, uh, talked about how she was a low-level detective at the start and how she started off at the bottom rung and she had to get her father's permission to get into that. That's irrelevant, how she had to beg to be let into the academy. That's, that's going into some ad hominem shit. But not not really. It sort of states that she isn't that strong compared to the top, top detectives who have all the cases under their belts. But but what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter because either way, Kiri Giri wasn't there. So she couldn't know. She couldn't know what went on in that room. She couldn't know who attacked first. The only one who could know, the only ones who could know, Saika, deceased, Leon, deceased, Monokuma, slash Junko, deceased, and they didn't say anything about it. The creator, tight-lipped, closed-mouthed, duck-lipped, and God. And uh, I don't think God told you because I didn't hear anything that sounded godly in that argument. So I, I'm pretty sure that we don't know. Now, if there's someone else who wants to challenge me and say that we do know what went on in that room, fine. Maybe maybe there's something hidden in the files or whatever. That is That doesn't even matter because that's not part of the canon. That was excluded from the story. But maybe there's some very, very, very vague hint that I missed out on. But I doubt that. So the narrative just doesn't show shit, okay? It doesn't. Moving on. Hmm. Argued that the Ultimates are the best of the best, but says... The, old, the original name was Super Duper, not Ultimates. The original name was Super Duper, not Ultimates. Oh yeah, he said that the Ultimates are the best of the best at, at what they do. <laughs> when he's talking about Leon, I'm not even sure why. These are random notes here, but I guess I, why not? He said that Leon is like the ultimate baseball. He's the ultimate baseball star, X Y, all that sort of shit. But then he corrects me, which I accept. And says that the original name for them was not Ultimate, it was Super Duper. Now, Cho does mean Ultimate, or slash Super, which is what they were called. They were like the, the Cho, I forgot the full name of it. <clears throat> but, again, that's sort of beside the point, because he's arguing that they're called Super Duper. They're not called Ultimates. But then when it fits his argument, he's like, Leon was the Ultimate, so he could have, he, he, he's much stronger than Saiga. He's the, one of the strongest kids in the world, because Ultimate Baseball Player. In high school. Uh, no, that's a contra that's a self-contradiction. Next point. The game doesn't tell you side cut attacks first. Makoto's limited point of view, which changes Kira and Kirigiri's limited point of view, where she doesn't admit Sayaka did it and can't know Minakuma should have admitted. You said it was the only evidence and he didn't admit to killing him too. Okay, yeah, like I just said, Monokuma didn't admit to doing it. And you said that was the only evidence that we 100% know would refer to the fact that Saika supposedly struck first. Doesn't exist. And and then he, he harps on and on. And this is why circular logic is bad, because it helps you miss other points. It helps you miss other points that you could use to help your argument or see the other person's argument, because you're so focused on that narrow tunnel vision argument there that you're putting forth over and over again the same shit he goes on and on about the notepad which yes that's evidence it's not really applicable to anything until it's investigated but yes it is temporarily evidence while it exists it, well not really because it doesn't point to the fact that she's trying to kill him it just points to that she wants to hold a meeting in her room with him and so unless it is found at the same time that she is doing something it doesn't matter but that's that's getting beside the point because at that point she's been found red-handed so whatever but it's, seriously it's getting beside the point because even after that's cleaned up there's more evidence the knife i think i said this though the knife the name plates the possibly blood on the clothes, though she, she could blame that on him, not Leon, but Makoto. She could say Makoto attacked her and and kill Makoto or, or, or just say that Makoto tried to attack Leon too. Or X, Y, she could say anything, basically. Just think about it. She has seven hours. And this is evidence that she would have to worry about. Varying degrees of worry. This is in addition to the notepad. 
but it's not resulting from the notepad. This is not damning evidence, but it's evidence that she can clean up, just like the notepad. Why all the focus on a notepad when it's all this horizontal plane of equal evidence? Well, not equal evidence, but evidence that is more important than a notepad that she also has to worry about. After actually doing the shit, which is the most important thing to do, kill Leon. You worry about a fucking notepad when you got a motherfucker to shank over and over again in five minutes. How the fuck would you dwell on that shit? And if you do, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't erase what's to come. The other evidence. Actually killing the motherfucker. Again, she, she, to say that she wouldn't go back and, and retrace her steps and check everything she did is being disingenuous to her. She has so much shit riding on this plan. She has so much fucking shit. To say that she would just forget, forget the notepad. But then again, you're saying she would forget it because she didn't throw it away, which is circle logic. To say that because she didn't throw away the imprint immediately, as soon as she wrote it, which makes no difference because you would have to do it sooner or later. She was not going to do it sooner or later. It's being very, very biased against her. Very unfair because she, she's just going to kill the dude and then sleep? Like what? She's not going to even try? And if she tries, she's just, she's just going to fail because, you know, Leon is best boy. She really, she's there is like, seriously, I can't even think of anything. I can't even think of a funny, of a funny argument. I can't even think of a, of a mock argument. What reason is there to say that she would fail? What reason is there to say that she would look, I mean, not even look for it, not even look for anything, not check her steps because she didn't at that moment. That's not re that's slippery slopes, man. Slippery slopes. I think that's just about everything. Uh, having the note makes the plan imperfect. No, it enables an out to blame a quarto at any step after killing Leon. And it's not a risk if she's seen giving Leon the note because she can then not kill Leon, which I already said, or dispose of the note later and claim it was unrelated. Because whatever happened would still be in Makoto's room. And if the nameplates aren't there, then what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, seriously, what the fuck? The nameplates aren't there, so what are you gonna say? Even though she, even even if, even if the note is found and the nameplates are, are switched and they see her writing the note, she could say that they switched again. She could say that oh I forgot something. Can I can I go back in my room? And then Makoto switched again with her, and so they ended up in the same spot that she would have been ordinarily in her room, and Makoto was in um her room with the nameplate, and she was in her room with his nameplate, and so Makoto was in Saka's room and she killed Leon. After the second switch or the third switch or whatever the fuck. It, it gets increasingly far-fetched. But my point is that there's no solid evidence against her. There's no proof for it. And the last thing I want to say is just like, seriously, this is, this is a major point. Again, it makes no difference if the note is disposed. It really makes no difference at all. Whether it's disposed before the fact or after the fact. Evidence is erased. Evidence which wouldn't damn her anyway, even if it were found. Let me lift this up just a bit. Ah, uh, there we go. Get the, still got the shadow under my eye. Ah, uh, give a fuck. Mm. This point is sort of universal. So, I'm gonna have to pull off to the side real fast. And say it in this fuck fucking parking space like the bum ass nigga I am reverse 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 this thing right here I'm not sure why I have to explain this but I don't mind doing it because sometimes when you think of fiction <clears throat> the connection to reality gets a little bit skewed like my camera just got and you don't think about the implications of reality. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this shit real fast because I don't feel like turning my car back off and on again. And I also don't feel like wasting gas. The longer I sit here with the car running, the longer it stays wasting gas. Just because something is more complicated does not make it worse. Just because in this case, Sayaka decides to roundabout like make a note and send that to Leon doesn't mean her plan is any worse than it. Matter of fact, it means it's better. 
for the reasons I said in the last video, it gives her an out for Makoto. But it, it doesn't make it any worse than, especially if she were to just go ahead and tell Leon what she wanted him to do, which is meet her in the room or go to him and have him accompany her back to her room, which would have been very stupid compared to being ready, <laughs> let alone having him be able to get acclimated to her and maybe start to have some doubts or be, be ready to do anything, and let alone how she's gonna get the knife and, and take the knife there and all that sort of shit. It's, it's more complicated, as a matter of fact, to do it the way that CERN's suggesting and to go ahead and have her go to his door and go back together or something like that. Especially if he forgets, if she decides to go ahead and just say, can you come uh, meet me at a, at a later time? Ringing the doorbell and leaving a note there is much simpler. But a plan that's more complicated is not necessarily a worse plan. A plan that's more complicated can cover more holes. A plan that's more complicated can be better understood because you're going through the motions more. A plan that's more complicated can be more foolproof because you've foolproofed it more. A plan that's more complicated can take a little bit longer to get done, but you can get it done more thoroughly. A plan that's more complicated is, is not worse at all. Now, it, it can be, but not just because it's more complicated, at least in this case, it's not going to be worse. Fuck it, Mustang, as usual. It doesn't mean anything. So many plans have been made that, that I'm not going to name, but just so many plans have been made in this world in a complicated manner that were useful. Maybe they've been simplified later on, but that doesn't make them worse because they've been simplified. Now, I'm not talking about shit like when YouTube becomes more complicated or some bullshit like that. But let's say, for example, the amount of features we have on YouTube now compared to <clears throat> the amount of features we had on YouTube back in like 2005. Is YouTube in 2005 100% better because of the fact that it is simpler? No. Is my car safer now because of the fact that it's simpler? No. Is it better for driving? No. It's more fun for driving for me, but that's subjective. All the technology and shit that's in newer cars, it's, it's better. It makes it better. These two dudes talking right next to me, but I'm trying not to raise gas anyway, so I'm about to hurry up and leave. I said I wasn't gonna make any examples. Just because, if you're if you're writing, by the way, just because you happen to make something complicated doesn't mean it's bad. Go ahead and write that complicated scheme, especially if you go ahead and say, but pointing it out by a character or whatever that is complicated. It might be too complicated. It might be complicated enough. There might have been easier ways to do it, but people are human. And so sometimes people are going to do things more complicatedly when they don't need to. That's all right. As long as you get the results you want, and as long as you don't overcomplicate, then you've hit the sweet spot, which is getting the shit done that you want to get done. He said that Saika had excess evidence, which was one extra thing. That's all he pointed out was one extra thing, the notepad. Excess, he said, a surplus of evidence. <coughs> That's not too complicated. It's one more thing. Okay? So that is already invalid. But even if it was a lot of extra shit that she created, as long as she cleaned it up to where it was not too complicated for her to clean up and or she missed shit because she couldn't possibly remember everything, it's fine. So when you write or when you plan in real life to do whatever, there is nothing wrong with over-preparing. I mean, not over-preparing. There is nothing wrong with preparing sufficiently for one, but taking extra steps to make sure your plan or, or your preparations are as complete as possible. That's all about that's about all I have to say. I don't really know what else to say. Well, I could just bullshit some whatever and raise more gas, but I don't feel like fucking doing that now. So I'm gonna get my ass out of this motherfucker. And I hope you enjoyed the I don't know what the fuck this is. It was slightly a rant, but I was trying not to be too mean. Just the the reply, the self-reply slash reply to CERN. And just in general, the logic that I put forth. Mr. Logic, Dallas the Manipulator, Rebel the New, all that shit, Lance Courier is out.